So in the previous video, we saw how to document our REST API documentation. And in this video, we will see how to aggregate the, all the uh, REST API documentation in one place in the API gateway so that it is easy for us to access the documentation. And, and also we will be doing some refactoring where we'll be replacing the library Spring Cloud Open Find Starter with the REST Client Starter. So without any further delay, let's start the video. So now I've opened uh, the API gateway project and inside this project, I'm going to go to the pom.xml file. And the first thing we are going to do is to add the Swagger dependencies, the Spring Doc Open API dependencies to the API Gateway project. So for that, I'm just going to go inside the dependencies section and I'm just going to paste in the two dependencies which we have added in other, other microservices. The first one is the Spring Doc Open API Starter Web MVC UI. So this dependency will help us to generate the REST API documentation in the HTML format. And it will also provide a nice GUI to view the documentation. And the next dependency is the Spring Doc Open API Starter Web MVC API, which will allow us to expose the REST API documentation as a YAML or a JSON uh, file. So after adding these two dependencies, what we have to do is we just have to make sure that these two dependencies are downloaded by clicking on the Maven icon to the top right side corner of your IDE if you're using IntelliJ. And after that, we are going to go inside source main resources and inside the application.properties file. I'm just going to add some properties. First one is going to be spring doc.swagger ui.path and I'm going to define the path uh, as slash swagger UI dot HTML. So after defining this path, I can access the the API documentation on this uh, URL path. After that, I'm just going to add dependency spring the the property spring dot API docs path is going to be slash API hyphen docs. So after that, I'm going to define some other properties called as spring doc dot swagger ui dot urls so here i'm going to provide the urls of our product service order service and the and the inventory service so by providing these properties open api will aggregate all these urls and it will show us in a drop down in the api documentation page so here what i have to do is the urls a property is actually taking a set of swagger urls so for that we have to define the urls property as a set so here for the set for the first element of the set i'm going to define you uh, i'm going to give an index of zero and i'm going to define the name property as product service and similarly i'm going to provide the url for product service so so this URL, I'm going to define it as slash aggregate slash product service slash v3 slash API docs. So this will be the URL of uh, URL where we can access the product service swagger documentation in the form of a uh, JSON uh, format. So we're just going to provide this um, this URL and after that and after that we are also going to create a route to match this particular path and then um, and then route it to this particular URL of the product service. For now, let's copy this one more time and then define property for our order service. So I'm just going to define the index as one and I'm going to replace the product service with order service. Similarly, I'm going to define another property with index two and I'm going to name it as inventory service. Uh, like this, we have provided the list of URLs to Swagger and Swagger will aggregate and display this uh, URLs in the UI. So the next thing we have to do is we have to create routes so that whenever um, a browser is calling, uh, sending a request for this particular path, we have to, we have to route them to the product service. So now to define the routes for this URL, we can go to the routes class inside the routes package. And I have already defined some routes similar to how we define the routes for the product service, order service, and the inventory service. And uh, the route bean I've created 
is called as uh, product service swagger route bean and here you can see that uh, i have defined the route id as product service swagger and similar to how we have defined the route for slash api slash product i have also defined the route for slash aggregate product service v3 api docs and uh, for the handler function i'm going to define the handler function to refer to the uh, URL HTTP localhost 8080. So this is the URL of the product service. And you can see another interesting uh, function call here called as filter. So what this filter will do is before calling the actual URL, what this will do is it will set the path uh, instead of this slash aggregate product service, so and so on, it will set the path as slash API docs, right? So instead of making the call, routing the URL to I can show you an example. So instead of routing the URL to this location, what the filter will do is it will replace this whole path with slash API docs, right? So at the end, the call which is being made to the product service will be HTTP localhost 8080 slash API docs. So this is the URL where we are exposing the uh, our REST API documentation in the JSON format. So this is what this bean will do. So similarly, I've created the same beans for order service. So for order service, you can see that the route is taking for the predicate path of slash aggregate order service v3 API docs. And it is has the handler function URL has HTTP localhost 8081. And also here we are defining the filter for to set the path as API docs. So the same thing is going to happen also for the inventory service sw um, service swagger uh, URL. So I'm going to set the same path for inventory service v3 API docs, uh, which is pointing to localhost 8082. And I'm going to again set the path as slash API docs. So this is the configuration we need to do to enable the to aggregate the, the documentation inside the API gateway. So what I'm going to do now is to refresh to restart the application of the API gateway. So once the application is uh, uh, restarted, I'm going to open the browser. And uh, in the browser, I'm going to open the URL localhost 9000 slash swagger UI dot html and you can see that it is returning us an error 401 because um, if you remember we have defined the security configuration for the api gateway so if i go to the config security config we have defined the security configuration for our api gateway and here we are configuring that all the requests should be authenticated and as we want to make this endpoint freely available what we have to do is we have to uh, permit some endpoint that can be accessed without any authentication so for that what i'm going to do is i'm i'm going to define a string array called as free resource urls and inside this free use resource urls i'm going to i'm going to define some list of paths called as uh, slash swagger UI HTML. So this is the actual path where we are um, exposing the HTML documentation and slash swagger UI. This is also a path where it will uh, serve the other resources like HTML and uh, JavaScript and CSS for the swagger documentation. And the slash v3 API docs is also the URL by default URL to expose the API documentation. And uh, likewise, we want to all we want we have added all the URLs where we want to add we want to allow without any authentication. So the one thing we have to remember is uh, we have to notice is I've also added the path slash aggregate slash star. So that means all the calls to this particular URL are also permitted without any authentication. So after adding this uh, particular uh, array, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define this inside the security configuration. After the authorize uh, variable, I'm going to type in dot request matchers and I'm going to provide the free resource URLs here to the request matchers and I'm going to call the method permit all. So what this configuration will do is it is going to permit all the auth requests uh, for this particular request matchers. So once you restart the application now and go back to the browser, and now if I reload the application, now you can see that we are able to see the inventory service by default. And to the top right corner, you have the 
text called as selected definition and if you click on this drop down you can see that we are able to see the three services we have so if i select order service you can see the rest api documentation of the order service so if i just expand you can see that we have all the related information the schemas the request bodies and the response information and all documented here likewise we are also going to do the same thing for the product service so the product service also has the schemas and the related uh, API endpoints inside the um, documentation page. So that is how you are going to aggregate all, all the REST API documentation in the API gateway. And we are also going to do one refactoring now, as I mentioned in the, as I mentioned. So what I are going to do is we are going to replace the Spring Cloud OpenFine library with the inbuilt REST client. So I had to do this because I realized after releasing the video that uh, Spring Cloud OpenFine is actually not uh, actively maintained anymore. And if you open the documentation of the Spring Cloud Open Fine, and if you click on the Learn tab and click on this reference documentation, right on this first page, it says that as announced in Spring Cloud 2022, we are now treating the Spring Cloud Open Fine project as future complete. We are only going to be adding bug fixes and possibly merging some small community future PRs. And we suggest migrating over to Spring Interface Clients instead. Right. So if you go to the Spring interface clients, what this means is to use this REST client, which is coming from the Spring Boot, the latest Spring uh, framework. So this is actually the preferred way to do the inter-service communication in Spring Boot. So we'll be migrating this, our logic to the REST client. So along with the REST client, what we are going to do is we are going to make use of the HTTP interface where we can define the REST calls as a HTTP interface. So this, you can see this documentation that the Spring Framework lets you define a HTTP service as a Java interface with HTTP exchange methods. So this is very similar to what our Spring Cloud Open Fine client is doing. So instead of, if I go back to the order service, and the inventory client. You can see that we have defined the inventory client and we have annotated this with fine client annotation and we have defined the request mapping annotation with the request method here, right? So instead of doing that, what we have to do is I can just remove this fine client annotation and also the request mapping annotation. And if I go back to the documentation, you can see that we can define uh, an annotation called as get exchange. So just you can copy this get exchange and I'm going to paste this here and I'm going to import this class from the web service annotation package and I'm going to and I'm going to provide the path as slash API slash inventory. So that is all you need to do to define the interface HTTP interface and uh, the request parameters and everything is going to be automatically taken care of by the Spring Framework. So let's all remove this unused annotations here. And uh, another thing, so this is the interface we have to define. And we also have to uh, define a, an implementation for this uh, interface. And for that, we need to just create a bean for the REST client. So if I go back to the documentation, if I go to the REST client section, you can see that uh, we can create a REST client in basically three ways. We can use the REST client class, you can use a REST template, you can use a web client. So as of now, the preferred approach is to use REST client because you can also use REST template, but this is not favored anymore because the REST client provides us a much more easier API to write the calls, the REST calls. And for web client, it is coming from a completely different project called as WebFlux. So if you want to use web, web client, you have to also add the WebFlux uh, dependency into your project, which is not really necessary if you just want to use web client. So we'll be using the implementation of the REST client in our project. So if I just click on this REST client class, you can define the REST client configuration in this particular manner. So we are just going to go back to our project and we are going to create a, inside the config package, I'm going to create right click and create a new Java class called as rest client config. And I'm going to add the configuration annotation on top of this rest client config class. And here I'm going to just paste in one um, method called as inventory client. So I'm going to create a bean for the inventory client 
method and I'm going to inside this uh, inventory client I'm going to first define the rest client by calling the rest client builder dot base URL and for the base URL we have to pass in the URL of the inventory service so for you have to create this particular field called as inventory service URL and if I just open the application dot properties file here we have the inventory URL inventory service as the inventory dot URL so what we have to do is we have to add this inventory dot URL we have to reference this inventory dot URL inside our rest client config class so I can do that by using the value annotation and here I'm going to provide the inventory dot URL here. So if you just have one one property to bind to this class, you can use the value annotation or else what you can do is you can also create a configuration properties class. So this is the recommended way to use the configuration properties class. If you have multiple properties, if you want to bind to the class, you have to use the uh, configuration properties uh, option and or else you want to inject into one property value, you want to inject into the class, you can just use the value annotation here. So after defining this particular inventory service URL variable, what you are doing is we are creating a rest client adapter and we are passing a rest client into this adapter class. And after defining a rest client adapter um, variable, we are providing this into the HTTP service proxy factory and we are going to build a proxy factory and inside this proxy factory we are going to create a client. So what this actually is doing is it's actually binding the rest client to the HTTP interface we have created in the in this uh, in this particular interface right. So you can see that this is like an interface and this interface you can provide the implementations for different way and different ways. So this implementation is specific for rest client. You can also create this same implementation for web client and also the rest template if you like. So this is the main thing you need to do to uh, change the configuration from Spring Cloud Fine to the REST client using HTTP interfaces. Uh, some other thing we have to do is we have to remove all the references to the Spring Cloud Open Fine Starter. So for that, I'm just going to open the order service application class and I'm going to remove this enable fine clients annotation. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the pom.xml file and I'm going to scroll down until I find the dependency spring cloud starter open fine and I'm also going to remove this dependency and just make sure to click on the maven icon to the top right side corner to force the, the IntelliJ to load the maven changes. So once this is done I'm going to restart the order service application so now I opened uh, the postman client and here I have the configuration to call the submit order endpoint. I'm going to call the HTTP localhost 9000 slash API slash order endpoint. And here I'm going to provide the body, uh, the required body for the submit order endpoint. And I'm going to go to the authorization tab and select the auth 2.0 option. And I'm going to provide the client ID as Spring Cloud client ID. So this is uh, the client ID we have created in the previous videos. So if you just open the browser, you can see that I've provided the client as Spring Cloud client ID and inside the credentials tab, I can just copy this client secret and let's go back to the Postman client. I'm going to make sure that I copy the client secret here. You can click on get new access token click on proceed and click on use token and let's just submit this particular request and if you click on send you can see that we have the text order placed successfully that means the order was placed successfully by using the spring by using the rest client configuration and without the spring cloud uh, open fine configuration to call the inventory client so this is uh, the small refactoring we want to I want to do in as part of this video and in the next video we are going to see how to implement circuit breaker pattern inside our API gateway and also the microservices so we will also learn about why circuit circuit breaker pattern and why to use the circuit breaker pattern I will see you in the next video until then happy coding techies